Hi, this is Chris with Launch Code. In this video, we're going to introduce a new concept that will allow us to further separate uh, our controllers from our model classes. Right now, I'm looking at my event controller class. Uh, our event controller is storing a list of event objects. And so in other words, our event controller is the one that's responsible for keeping track of event objects. Um, and so this is this is not ideal uh, for reasons that won't be obvious until we get to databases, but um, right now you should be motivated by the idea that we wanna keep the concerns of our controllers and models as separate as possible. Right now, if our controller knows exactly how event objects are being stored in the application, whether that's in, in a data structure or a database or written to file, uh, that's 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 uh, too, too much of a uh, overlap of concerns there. We want to separate that concern so that our controllers don't even need to know or care how our objects are stored. Okay, so to do that, we're going to create a new class. Let's go over to the project pane. I'm going to right click on my coding events package and create a new package. I'm going to call this data. And then within the data package, I'm going to right click and say new Java class. And I'm going to call this event data. This is going to be a class that's responsible for storing event objects. Okay, so this class is going to be, um, you know, it's not even, we're not even going to have constructed for this class, it's going to be kind of unique, it's going to be something that just contains static methods and properties. And so um, we're going to use it uh, to just have a, a single point of truth or a single point of operation for how our event objects are stored. So let's think a little bit about how we want to design this class. Um, and I'm going to do this with just some, some comments. The first thing we're going to need is a, we need a place to put to put events. So some kind of, for us, for now, that's going to be a data structure of some type. Then we need, uh, that's going to be our, our main um, uh, property of the class. Um, and so with that, we need some behaviors. And what do we want to be able to do? Well, our application should be able to um, you know, get all events. That's something we definitely want to do. You know, for example, in our event listing, we have all events listed out in a table. Um, we should be able to get a single event. And we should be able to, um, let's see, what else? Uh, we should be able to add an event to our collection. And then finally, something that we don't have as functionality in our application, but we'll add very soon, is uh, remove an event. That's a behavior that we'll want to have as well. Okay, so let's knock out these each uh, one at a time. So I need a place to put my events. And so the way I'm going to do this now, there are lots of choices you can make here. The, the one that I'm going to make is I'm going to make a, a map um, that contains um, integers, uh, integer and event pairs. Okay, so let's see. Uh, oh, there we go. That's why it's not suggesting. I misspelled event. Okay. And then, so I'm just hitting, uh, you know, Option Enter, which uh, um, Alt Enter is the the version for Windows. Um, when you put your cursor next to a class that's not been imported, and you do that, um, it will, if it's if it's got a single uh, or obvious choice, it'll automatically add those imports for you. It's always good to check those out though, and make sure the the imports are the the correct ones. So I'm gonna make a map here, and I'm gonna call this uh, Events, and um, I'm gonna initialize it to a new hash map okay and let's see what else do I need to do I want to make this a private static member so what is what is this and why did we do it so we need a place we said we need a place to keep our events and so that is this is indeed a place where we can keep our events it's static which means that there's only going to be one of these um, and I've declared it to be of type map with integer event pairs what does this mean and how am I going to use that? So I'm going to use actually internally, this is just going to be a hash map. Uh, map is an interface uh, that, that allows you to store things in key value pairs. Um, recall that we generally want to code to interface types whenever possible. So that's why I did that. You could make this a hash map, just a little bit better to make it a map. So what this means is that our map object is going to store integer event pairs and the integers are going to be the IDs and so we'll see that that makes it very very easy to do some of the behaviors that I want to implement down below because I'll be able to retrieve an event object just given its ID and so that's going to make some things pretty easy for me so um, 
events. It's not being used now, so it's grayed out. And then it's a new hash map. This gets run uh, when the class uh, is first sort of loaded into memory. And so we'll have one empty hash map um, when our application starts up. Okay, so let's implement some of these methods now. Uh, maybe the first one that might be uh, the most obvious one is we need to be able to add an event. So let's go down. I put that third when I was when I was outlining this, but let's go ahead and implement that one first. So um, I want to make a public static um, void. I don't need to return anything from this. We'll just call it add. And the method should take a single parameter. It should take an event, right? That's uh, what we want to add to our collection. And what should this do? Well, it should just say events dot put events dot id actually I need to say get id and then events itself all right so what I'm doing here is I'm in my map I'm putting a key value pair the key is the id of the event object and the value is the object itself and as we said before using the ids as the keys will allow us to easily retrieve those events okay so that looks good um let's see what else do we need to do let's uh let's get a single event let's do this one now so let's say public static all these are going to be static as i said just because i'm not going to create instances of event data i just want a collection of methods that i can use um, okay so we get a single event that means we're going to return an event object and we're going to say get by id so the way we're going to get a, a single event is we're going to have the caller pass in um an ID and that will be the, the ID that we retrieve and so let's see what do we want to do here we want to return events dot get ID okay so we're going to retrieve the item with the specific key from our map uh, that matches the ID that's passed in okay let's see uh, one more thing we want to do here, let's let's uh, get all events. This one should be pretty easy. So let's say, what is this going to do? This is going to um, return, it's going to be private, or sorry, public, static. And it's going to return a collection of events. I'll talk about this more in a second, uh, why we're using a collection. But just for now, think of this as, as like a list, okay? It's going to return a list of events. Um, and let's see, we uh, there we go. So return list of events, let's say get all we don't need any parameters since we're just going to return all the events. So I want to return events, and I want all the values. I don't need to return the keys. Um, I just want to return the values. And so there's a values method on the map interface that will uh, give you back a collection of all of the values in, in your collection. And since um, our values are events, this results in a collection of events. So what is this? I said I would explain this a little bit more. So collection is an interface. Let's go to the web and, and look at some answers. So I'm going to say Java 13 Java doc collection. So this is a good way to kind of just pull up the, uh, the documentation for a class. Java doc um, is just the, the sort of jargony term that's it's used to refer to the official Java documentation. It, it doesn't look great. There's, all, there's a lot of symbols and stuff in here. This is going to be hard to read, but this is always the definitive source of truth for how Java classes work the built-in ones at least. So um, let's see, this is an interface, and this is the, the, the interface that I'm using. And um, it's, it, let's see, what do we need to know about this? The only thing we need, really need to know is that this extends the iterable interface. Iterable is an interface that has behaviors related to um, iterating over collections, in other words, looping over a collection. And that's really all that we need to do. So while, you know, if this, if, uh, going back to our code, if the dot values method if that returned a list of events, that would be kind of more obvious. We would want a list of events and we could loop over it. Um, you know, because it returns a collection, that's still going to work for us because the collection interface extends iterable, and iterable is the interface that, when implemented, gives you the behavior of being able to loop over a collection. So we don't really have a choice here because this is this this um, method is defined as part of the map interface. So we don't get to choose what data type it returns. We just need to make sure that whatever it does return is something we can work with. And since collection extends iterable, it indeed is. Okay, so there we go. What's left? Oh, we need to be able to remove event, an event. Okay, so let's go down and we'll say public static void remove. And this is, uh, we're going to need to know the ID in order to remove it. So we'll take a single parameter of ID. 
we'll say events dot and we can see here once I dot, put a dot after an object IntelliJ is going to give me one of these uh, suggestions we can see that there is a remove method that takes the key so um, that's what we actually want to do so we'll say events dot remove ID okay so that will that will extract a single uh, event from the events map okay I think this is pretty good uh, one more thing I want to do is um, let me come up to the top here so just this is a uh, just a little bit of additional safety we can add to our class I'm gonna make this final so that means that once this property this field is initiated uh, it can't change and that doesn't mean the data inside the map can't change it just means that the map itself can't change so this just ensures that uh, if we try to do something funny like replace our collection of events with some other totally different collection of events that that will will get a, a Java error and, and uh, an exception that uh, that won't be able to happen so just a bit of additional security we can put there okay so let's go ahead and uh, clean this up a little bit um, I'm gonna remove my comments around note taking here and then I'm gonna go refactor my controller to use this event data class okay um great so I can now just totally get rid of this so this is how I was previously storing events I was storing them in a list a static list in the controller itself uh, now that I have my event data abstraction uh, that encapsulates all the data related behavior for events I'm gonna use that and so I delete it and again once we delete follow the breadcrumb trail of compiler errors that IntelliJ flags for you so we'll go one by one so display all events recall this controller method is going to pass in a collection of all events into the template to be displayed so instead of passing in this collection which we no longer have we can say event data dot get all because this method the static method will return a collection of all the events okay um, so just recall that if you have a, a class and a static method within that class you use the name of the class to call that method we don't have an actual event data object this is calling the static method off the class okay so that should work there um, our next method display create event form that doesn't work directly with any event objects itself so that's fine as is um, let's see process create event form this creates a new event from a form submission and here we're, we're adding manually adding we were previously adding uh, a new event object into this uh, into the, the the static list that we were storing in the in the controller now instead of doing that I can say let's say event data dot add okay um, and add just happened to be the same method name um, that's you know there's no sort of magic happening there that just happened to be the same name of the method that we put in event data so remember this method just puts a single event into its internal collection okay um, so I think that's it so we're gonna test this in a second but just to reiterate what we did we created this class uh, and you might call this a, a static class because it only has static members um, you can't actually just make a, a class itself static but you can make all of the members of a class static and then you know sometimes Java developers will refer to that as a static class and in any, in any case we have this event data class all of its members are static and uh, the only public members are these methods that um, allow us to to um, you know sort of do various things with event objects and to, to keep track of them so um, when we talk about abstraction or encapsulation um, these are both sort of you know similar but different concepts encapsulation is the is the main one uh, at play here what we're doing is we're encapsulating the behavior of storing event objects so that nobody else needs to know how they're stored I can come in and you know I could do something like change the uh, the, the type of this collection that's being used internally within the event data class and as long as I up to update the event data code itself nobody else needs to to know about that change and so that's that's a good thing that decouples um, our application uh, from having to know you know how things are stored internally so that, that that's that's a good thing to do when you're writing Java code think about you know if I were to change something about this class how would it affect other classes and you want to reduce the impact of those changes so um, that's encapsulation in a nutshell so we've encapsulated the behavior of storing event objects by creating this event data class and then we've refactored our event controller so that it now uses the event data class rather than using a static list so again this is a classic refactoring we've changed the uh, we've changed our code but the behavior is still the same we've improved it um, but we haven't really added any new behaviors so let's start this up and hopefully things just work as they as they have been 
Okay, we're going. Let's go back to the browser and refresh. All our data will go away as we're used to by now. So let's create a couple events. Okay, so uh, that did in fact get created correctly. So that tells me that this stuff is working. I'm going to create one more just for fun. Okay, cool. So we've refactored our code to use this new data layer, and now we're in a much better position to, uh, to, to go forward and add some features to our code. And this is also going to be much sim more similar to how our code looks when we implement um, persistence with databases in a future lesson.